Spring is in the air at some point in the next few months, so I thought today's video would be perfect to get those springtime cards ready to go, and we're going to be doing some watercolor washes. Whether you're a seasoned crafter or just a beginner, anyone of any level can make these cards, so let's get to it. First things first, let's talk about the canvas, which is the cardstock itself. I am using watercolor cardstock. Canson XL is very inexpensive, and you can also go to big box stores and get watercolor cardstock there, usually with a coupon. That's all you need, nothing special. I press some Catherine Puller ink down onto my glass surface, kind of wet it a little bit with water, and I've got a big tub of water up there, and I'm just creating a wash. That's it, that's all done and done. You can let it dry naturally, go get a sandwich or something, or if you have no patience, you can just zap it with the heat tool. Now, I like to keep those petals there at the bottom, but if you don't like them, you can dab them away with a kitchen cloth, and it'll be a lot cleaner wash, but I like, I like a little bit of contrast down there. So, once that's good and dry, I'm going to just do a little stamping on this wash. This is one of four cards we're making today. This is by far the simplest. This is a stamp set from my friend Justine Hovey. And I thought butterflies was perfect for the spring theme we've got going on for all these cards today. Spring is coming soon. So I thought we would do some spring themed cards, but all with some kind of watercolor wash, because you know what? You can do it. You don't need watercolors to do these cards. You can use your inks unless they're archival inks. If you have Distress Inks, Distress Oxides, Catherine Puller Inks, Alton New Inks, Scrapbook.com Inks, any kind of inks you can do this with. So for these stamps right here, I'm just going to stamp them with some black ink. It's a pigment ink. I'm using Versifying Claire Nocturne Black Ink. And the reason why I'm using this ink is because A, it stamps beautifully, and B, I can do some quick heat embossing with it. So I'm just sprinkling on some clear embossing powder from WOW, and then I'll go ahead and heat set it. And I love that dark black against that pink wash. And then for fun, I found some old pattern paper in my stash. Uh, you can create little squiggles with black markers if you want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down to that pattern paper and then glue that down to a card base and we've got our very first spring watercolor washed card right here. So simple, so easy, and that wash took 4.2 seconds. Earlier today, I got a notification from PayPal thanking me for my order to some game place, an order of which I did not pay that was a lot of money, so I had to open a dispute, which means someone has hacked into my PayPal account. If you go to Google right now and type in your name or email address, there's all kinds of crap out there. Your name, your home address, your health records, your relatives, and then my PayPal got hacked. I could not take it anymore, so I found this company called Aura who is sponsoring today's video. I signed up for an online uh, subscription. They have found so much stuff. I, I can't even begin to tell you all the stuff that they found. They found all these data brokers that are selling the information that has my email. They found credit cards that were open that I didn't know anything about. So cleaning up the information not only helps reduce the amount of spam mail that I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use this information to access all my other accounts, even social media accounts, and I guess apparently PayPal. Other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance. It says it's up to a million bucks and I get it all for this amount. After my experience, I just had to share this with you. I do have a 14 day free trial. You can go to aura.com slash laurel and check it out for yourself. You're gonna be amazed to see how much of your information is being leaked, I'm telling you. It's disgusting. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video today. I just had to share this with you, check it out. And now let's get back to some happy stuff, cards. Now let's level it up a little bit by creating a wash with a couple of different colors. Same technique here, smush your ink down onto a glass surface, plastic plate, plastic wrap from your stamp packages, a, pa a plate, anything that you've got, and go ahead and just, I'm gonna wet the cardstock first and then I'm just gonna drop in the color. Don't be afraid to drop in color. Don't worry about trying to be perfect. The beauty is gonna be in how the colors move together. Even though this is looking a tad bit ugly right now, it's almost like the uglier it looks, the better it's gonna dry. I just don't know why that's true. I brought in a fourth color because I decided I need a little bit of contrast, so I added a darker red or pink or whatever I threw in there. 
and just kind of let it, the water do its thing. It's honestly quite magical. And then I'm just gonna flick on a whole bunch of water droplets because I want that soft, airy watercolor wash look. And I'm gonna go ahead and start drying it. Now I don't want the petal of waters here, so I'm just dabbing them away with a cloth. Then right as I'm drying, I decided I want a couple of more water flicks. So I'm just dumping a whole bunch more water on there. And then I'm just gonna dry it. And it looks like a hot mess, but when it's dry, it's beautiful. And then when you begin to turn it into the card that you're gonna do, it's gonna be stunning because this is made to be a background, like just something nice and beautiful sitting in the background of the card. That's the intention of this particular watch. So you can use whatever colors you want. So I'm gonna grab another stamp set also from my friend Justine. And this one is beautiful. It's one stamp set, but it's got butterflies and flowers and foliage and all kinds of stuff. But I'm going in with a deep red. Now you can stamp black or gray or whatever, but I wanted to keep the colors kind of consistent. So I went in, went in with a darker red. Now thank God I used my Misty stamping tool because I did not ink up the top of that flower very well. Didn't do it very well the second time. Didn't do it very well the third time. So I'm pretty glad I got my, my Misty out or I would have messed this whole shebang up. <laughs> I swear this is one of the best investments I ever made. And here's a look at this finished card. I just stamped a sentiment, I didn't stamp it. I grabbed a sentiment out of my magic mug that I had already pre-cut and dyed and went ahead and glued it down and you've got this card. Now it's time for a break. I'm gonna have a little peppermint bark. Got this from Costco. Anywho, not crafting related. All right, grabbing some more watercolor cardstock. And this time I'm gonna do something different. Anyone and the sun can do this, your kids can do this. Just grab a couple of colors you like. Use watercolors if you have them, use paints, use inks, use whatever you have. And I'm just gonna grab some colors and I'm just gonna paint little splotches all over the card. It's gonna end up being three rows th each, three rows across, three rows down by the time I'm done. And just, I'm going in having fun with the colors. I'm letting them mix together because I want them all to work together. So what works better when you start mixing them all together. And again, I wanna keep these cards kind of in the same color palette as the other two cards I've already made. So I'm trying to keep the colors somewhat consistent here. And go ahead and put your splotches down. And of course, you know it, you gotta dry it. All right, then you're gonna take whatever black pen you've got in your stash, a Sharpie, a marker, whatever, and you're gonna start drawing leaves. I am not, I'm a stamper, I'm a painter. I am not a drawer. So this was like, you know, I didn't know if this was going to turn out. And quite frankly, if it didn't turn out, I was going to tell you all my 11 year old made this. <laughs> but just go in and add different leaves or any kind of foliage. It doesn't have to be leaves, but in each one of those blobs, because that's all I'm doing. The point of this video is kind of a spring floral foliage theme. So that's why I'm keeping it foliage related. You could do other little doodles and doodads if you want. But just think about, you know, nine little blobs of paint on your, or ink in this in this case, on your cardstock can be a great background for anything. If you're a doodler, do a doodler, do a doodler. That's not right, do a doodle. A Halloween theme, you can do little pumpkins and gourds and yik, da, da, da. for Christmas, you can make your blobs Christmas themed and add in snowmen and stockings and ornaments. I mean, just think about this layout, really can work great for you. Um, I was starting to run out of ideas of leaves because you know I don't pay much attention to leaves. And again, I'm not a drawer, so, but you know, I think this is gonna turn out just fine. Let's go ahead and fast forward this a little bit because I don't want y'all falling asleep or running off to Costco in the middle of my video to get yourself some peppermint bark. I want you to stay here and watch me till the end. All right, so I've gone in, got my final thing. Now I've got this cool little background here, right? That you can say your kid made it if you don't like it. I went ahead and went ahead and inked that card up with that colored ink orange peel so it would match the orange that I have on the paint blobs. I'll go ahead and grab my paper trimmer and trim that down a little bit. I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just kind of trimming where my ink line comes off. You don't always have to be so specific when you're card making. You know, we're all not, we're not engineers. We're not mathematicians. We're not going to grade you on your perfect line or perfect angle or all that stuff. No. So I went ahead, cut that down. I'm going to use my glue, add some glue. You could pop this up with some foam tape if you wanted to. Uh, I probably should have done that, but I didn't think about it until now. But anyway, pop it up, glue it down flat, whatever floats your boat, doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna stick that right down to the bottom of the cardstock. And then I'll trim off the left and right because the card base is a little bit wider than the panel that I cut down. And then we'll be able to finish this off. That hello die was also in my magic mug. It is something I had pre-die cut with some brown. It's a really deep brown colored. 
Go me, it's not black, that's something. Brown, black, it's different, right? Go ahead and add a little dots. This is my favorite glue of all time. It's the only glue I use. And this is still the original bottle of glue that I've had for about four years. I haven't gone through all the glue and it's never clogged on me once. This is Barely Arts glue and it's linked in the description. I get asked about my glue a lot. And then I'll just go ahead and adhere that down. It kind of broke up the background a little bit. Yeah, I covered up some of the some of the leaves, but if I didn't put some kind of border there, you wouldn't be able to see the hello. It was just too busy. So I had to cover up a little bit of the card, but here's a look at this finished card. And I think it's nice and cute and definitely handmade with a, a personal touch, I'd say. Now moving on to the fourth and final card, of the spring floral botanical wash series. This time I'm going to do a little bit of fun heat embossing. All right, so I'm using again Catherine Puller inks, which you can do heat embossing with. Why I love them is I don't wanna pull out all kinds of colored heat embossing. So I can just use my ink pad and my misty stamping tool. So I'm only partially inking up the stamp each time with the different colors that I'm choosing to use. And I'll clean them in between. So I just added a little bit of orange here. I'm cleaning it with just water. That's a microfiber cloth and water. I'm adding some do, -si -do here. And I thought that was really pretty. And then I'm gonna be a little daring and I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of mochiato. Macchiato? Mochiato, no, macchiato. With a little bit of browning. Talk about daring, I wanted a teeny tiny bit of contrast, but wait, get ready to ooh and ah. Hi, that's pretty. I love it. So we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle on some clear embossing powder and heat set it. And the reason we're doing this is because, well, two reasons. One, this video is all about watercolor washes and there's no wash on this card yet. And two, the heat embossing is gonna resist any watercolor that we put down. So that's why I'm doing this. So this is a great way to get beautiful colors of heat embossing without having to go and buy a whole bunch of embossing powder colors. Ha! All right, so heat that up. So that's gonna basically work as a resist. So anything you put down on the top of it, as long as it's not archival ink, will resist. So I'm gonna go in and do a wash. Now you can go in and do a wash with a paintbrush if you want to, but you know, maybe you don't have a paintbrush, maybe you don't like to paint, whatever floats your boat. We're gonna do a little smush in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, chiffron I think that is, and I'm gonna add a little bit of pink, and we're going to spritz that up with water and just do some smushing, straight smushing baby. Smush, smush, smush until you get the look that you want. It's not changing the color of the flowers because we've protected that with heat embossing. And because I did colored inks, all those colors, the pink, the orange, and the brown are all down there. So you have this beautiful wash of watercolor. Ready to look at it? Ooh, ah. And you can do your flowers any way you want to. So there you have it, my friends, some spring watercolor washed floral foliage cards. Did you have a particular style that was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you had a great time. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more adventures and hit that bell. And until next time, I will see you very soon.